recurrent pregnancy loss. If somebody got two or more conservative fail clinical pregnancies documented by ultrasound or histopathology, we said that particular patient or a person got what we call a recurrent pregnancy loss. In other words, this patient had two or more pregnancies which didn't go well. About 50% of patients with recurrent pregnancy loss have no defined cause. In other words, even with all the investigation, we can't find what is the cause of this pregnancy loss. Now, pregnancy, recurrent pregnancy loss, it's a complex, challenging scenario. It is frustrating to the patient, to the family, and to the treating doctor as well. What may be the causes of recurrent pregnancy loss? We should look for something like genetic. In that case, we're talking of aneuploidy, which can be due to translocation. That can be a balanced translocation, reciprocal translocation, or Robesonian translocation. The other important thing we should look for in these patients is called anatomical congenital Mullerian tract anomaly. In others, congenital Mullerian tract anomaly are very common in this patient. Therefore, we should look for them. What are those? It can be a septa uterus, can be a uniconiate uterus, can be a biconiate uterus, it can be didelphic uterus, or even an acute uterus. But however, a septa uterus is the most common congenital anomaly you can get in this patient. 12.6% of patients with recurrent pregnancy loss have congenital uterine anomaly. Therefore, it's very important that as clinician, you look for that kind of abnormalities in these patients. Then they can also have acquired uterine anomalies, which are also very common and popular. Actually, about close to about 40% of patients which are African in origin may have fibroids, polyps, and Asherman syndrome. Asherman syndrome may be due to DNCs which are done for this patient because they got miscarriages. Therefore, they usually get what you call evacuation and DNC. And those may expose them to what we call Asherman syndrome, which by definition is adhesions which grow in the uterine cavity. Now, the Asherman syndrome as well may increase the risk of re uh, recurrent pregnancy loss in these women. Therefore, it's very important that whatever intervention we are trying to do for this patient may also increase the chances of them having recurrent pregnancy losses. We should also look for endocrine problems that can be maternal in origin, like diabetes, thyroid, hyperprolactinemia, which is rare to cause recurrent pregnancy loss, but we also have to look for it. Antiphospholipid syndrome, which we call APLS, is very common. It's found in about 8 to 12 percent of patients with recurrent pregnancy loss. Antiphospholipid syndrome increases the risk of thrombosis and placental insufficiency, where the baby growth is impaired and the patient have got what you call antiphospholipid syndrome. Now, the other factors which may cause what you call recurrent pregnancy loss, it may be environmental factors, cigarette smoking, obesity, alcohol intake or consumption, or high contact contain of caffeine, something like uh, Red Bulls and so forth. And other factors in, it can be immunological, where the, the body rejects the pregnancy itself and the body fight or the uterus have what we call 
natural cells which fight with any pregnancy implantation or even growth of pregnancy in that area. Now, it's very important when you evaluate a person with recurrent pregnancy loss, as I said, the assessment of the medical problem should be the first one. Genetic evaluation, karyotyping can be done. Assessment of uterine anomalies, as I said, congenital malformation of the uterus by doing pelvic ultrasound, SSG, hysteroscopy, or even MRI. Mitral biopsy should be done and also test for infection like TOSH. And then evaluate also the product of conception. It's very important when you do DNC or evacuation to send those products for chromosomal microarray, which can be done within 24 hours. So that they check that all is done and, and there's no problem as far as the chromosomes are concerned of the lost fetus. Treatment or and management of recurrent pregnancy loss. As I said, medical condition should be the first one to be stabilized, hypertension, diabetes, thyroid, and so forth. Chromosomal anomalies should be identified, doing what you call a prenatal genetic testing, or you can do a pre-implantation genetic testing, which we call BGTA, or chromosomal villus sampling in those pregnancy, in, in pregnancies, and then amniosynthesis and NIPT which is the basic investigation of such patient so that you can come to really finding out what may have caused recurrent pregnancy loss. Uterine anomalies can be corrected surgically. That can be done by hysteroscopy or laparoscopy, resection of the septum. Laparoscopic myomectomy play a major role in these patients and also a uterine reconstruction whereby there's a lot of fibroids which we remove, then you reconstruct the uterus either laparoscopically or by laparotomy or even using a robotic. Immunological factors, if are found, you can use heparin, low molecular weight heparin to help this patient adding aspirin, which can, uh, as well can enhance your treatment so that you can achieve pregnancy in this patient. Thank you.